locomotives, massive, powerful, dedicated to pulling freight with a goal of on-time performance. Our railroad operates a fleet of more than 2,500 daily, not including the numerous foreign line locomotives running on our system. Tracking and maintaining these locomotives is a monumental task. And with the advent of the computer and improved telecommunications, Burlington Northern has dramatically improved its capability to track and keep essential records on its locomotive fleet. But it still requires a skilled individual to visually verify the safe condition of a locomotive to guard against anything that might endanger the crew or the public. Now, this presentation will review the regulations that pertain to the daily inspection of locomotives and show you how to perform the daily inspection and fill out and submit the proper paperwork. Why must we perform daily inspections? Well, we all want to work in a safe environment. And taking time to perform the inspection will detect any unsafe condition that could result in personal railroads that operate within the boundaries of the United States are under the jurisdiction of the United States Department of Transportation. Its branch, the Federal Railroad Administration, or FRA, issues regulations requiring the daily inspection of all locomotives. These regulations are found in the Code of Federal Regulations entitled Transportation 49 CFR Part 229 Railroad Locomotive Safety Standards Section 229.21 published and distributed by the FRA. The requirements can also be found in Burlington Northern's Air Brake and Train Handling Rule Book. Air Brake and Train Handling Rules state each locomotive in use must be inspected at least once during a calendar day and a written report of the inspection will be made on Form 16450-N Locomotive Inspection Report for each locomotive requiring inspection. A calendar day is defined as the time period from midnight to midnight. It is the responsibility of the engineer to ensure that a daily inspection has been performed on each unit and is personally liable if the daily inspection is not performed. Look at the daily inspection card located inside the cab of each locomotive in a multi-unit consist. The card must show the date, location, and time of the previous calendar day inspection. All locomotives in the consist must be inspected if the card indicates that an inspection is due. If a locomotive was not used on a given calendar day, the words not used will be entered on the card. Remember, only enter not used if you are certain that the locomotive was not used on that calendar day. After examining the card and determining that the locomotive is due for an inspection, the engineer must see to it that the inspection is made. If there are no mechanical forces available, the engineer must perform the inspection. The floor must not be obstructed with anything that could cause a slipping, tripping, or fire hazard. Tools must be stored in their proper receptacles, and the fire extinguisher secured in its holder. Fusees and torpedoes must be stored in a closed metal container. The emergency brake valve will be clearly stenciled or designated by an adjacent badge plate. Cab windows of the lead locomotive must provide an undistorted view of the right of way that they are securely mounted and braced, being danger, high voltage, or the word danger. The cab must be provided with proper ventilation and be capable of maintaining a cab temperature of 50 degrees. The cab lights must be bright enough so that the crew can work effectively. Gauge lights should illuminate the gauges without interfering with the crew's vision of the track and signals. While in the cab of the lead locomotive, test the horn, bell, window wipers, and headlight to ensure that they are operating properly. Before leaving the cab, check the sanders. With the locomotive online, activate the manual sander. The sanders must deposit sand on the rail in front of all lead axle wheels in the direction of movement. Place the reverser in relay and engine room should be free of oil, water, or any obstruction that creates a slipping, tripping, or fire hazard. Check the hand railing to make sure it is secure and in good condition. While inspecting the engine compartment, you should check to make sure that there are no exhaust leaks. This would also be a good time to check the water and oil levels to avoid possible problems online. 
Although not part of the locomotive inspection, checking the water and oil levels could eliminate possible problems that are easily rectified at most home terminals. At the coupler, open the knuckle and check the pulling face of the knuckle to ensure that it is not cracked or broken. The coupler carrier must also be checked for cracks or breaks. The minimum clearance above the rail for the pilot, snow plow, or end plate must not be less than three inches or more than six inches. While at the end of the locomotive, check the MU cable and cable connections. The cables must not be broken or have badly chafed insulation. The plugs, receptacles, and terminals should also be in good working order. Moving down the side of the locomotive, check the grab irons and handrails for proper clearance. The handrails must provide two and one half inches of clearance through their entire length, while the grab irons must provide at least two inches of clearance. The next area to inspect is the locomotive truck. It may be necessary to use a flashlight to properly inspect portions of the truck assembly. While inspecting the truck frame, check for any obvious breaks or cracks that will affect the truck's structural integrity. The suspension system should also be examined, looking for items such as coil springs that are broken or fully compressed when the locomotive is at rest. The shock absorber, if so equipped, must not be broken or leaking oil or any other fluids. Check for a loose tie bar or broken gib. Check the hanger and the pin. An elliptical spring on locomotives so equipped may not have its top leaf broken or any other three leaves broken. Look for insecure attachment of the traction motor gear case, cracked or broken motor suspension lug. With the brake cylinder released, check for proper brake shoe clearance. One way to do this is by using the truck cutout on the side of the locomotive. Be sure to cut each truck back in before continuing your inspection. The brake shoes must be fastened with a brake shoe key and aligned to the wheel. After reapplying the brakes, be sure that the piston travel does not exceed one and one-half inches less than the total possible piston travel. For example, if total possible piston travel were eight inches, the maximum allowable piston travel would be one and one-half inches less than eight, or six and one-half inches. Total po locomotive inspection and repair form, or blue card, in the cab. When inspecting the brake rigging, make sure that the levers, rods, and pins are not cracked, broken, or dragging. Now, look in and inspect the wheels. The wheels must not be loose or have a crack or break in the flange, tread, rim plate, or hub. In addition, the wheels cannot have a gouge or chip in the flange. Look for flat or shelled spots on the wheel. The wheels must not have a flat spot larger than two and one-half inches and must not have a shelled out spot two and one-half inches or more in length. Report all flat spots and consult the air brake and train handling book for speed restrictions. While it's a simple procedure to measure a flat or shelled spot on a wheel, measurement of the flange or rim is more involved. Therefore, Burlington Northern's policy is to measure all wheels every 46 days. Wheels will not remain in service if wear could possibly condemn them before the next 46-day or mid-trip inspection. When moving to the other end of the locomotive and repeating the component inspection for that truck, inspect the fuel tank area and make sure that the fuel tank inspection of one side of the locomotive or consist, inspect the opposite end before moving to the other side. Continue your inspection until you've reached your starting point. After the locomotive has been inspected and no defects have been noted, the engineer must sign the daily inspection card the date, location, and time the inspection was completed must be entered on the card. A daily inspection report must also be filled out for each locomotive inspected. Enter the initials of the locomotive inspected, such as BN, or if a foreign line unit such as Union Pacific, enter UP, and then enter the locomotive number. Next, enter the station, or the closest station, where the inspection was performed, and the initials of the state, Entering the initials of the state will help to eliminate confusion since stations with similar names may be found in different states. Enter the time that the inspection was completed using continental time and then enter the date. Under the column repairs needed, list all of the safety defects that were observed. 
If there were no defects observed, leave the column blank. Remember to sign the report at the bottom. Now, turn the form over to the back side. You will note that regional shops are listed. Check the appropriate box of the shop the locomotive is assigned to. If you have a question as to where the locomotive is assigned, look on the daily and mid-trip inspection card. On the card is a box titled Assigned To. This will indicate the shop where the locomotive is assigned and is the location where this report must be mailed. Normally, after the report is completed, it must be turned in with your time slip. However, you should check with your local supervisor to comply with local policy regarding submission of the daily inspection report. If the inspection of the locomotive reveals a federal defect which cannot be corrected by the engineer, do not move the locomotive. Immediately inform the train dispatcher or mechanical supervisor of the defect and be governed by their instructions. Refer to your air brake and train handling rule book for instructions relating to the handling of non-complying locomotives. Remember, the engineer must still sign the inspection card of the defective locomotive regardless of the defect. The entry simply indicates that the engineer has performed the required inspection and has completed the inspection report. Following these procedures and applying good common sense will result in locomotives that provide a safe work environment for you and prevent needless delays to our valued customers. Have a good trip.